Halo Infinite Campaign DLC, a new game plus model, new modes, and why free for all is not ranked. And I answer a whole lot more of your questions within this video. So stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. How's it going Halo fans? Kevin here once again. Today we're doing another video of answering your questions from the community. I recently went to my community page and asked you guys if there's anything you want to know more about multiplayer, campaign, playlist, progression, and a whole lot more. And you guys certainly left your replies. So I dug through here, selected some of the most highly rated comments as well as some interesting ones as well. Hopefully give a nice little well-rounded conversation with you guys at all. I do post these Q&A question errors often. So if you guys want to catch it next time it goes live, make sure to tap subscribe to the channel. So let's uh, get right into the content here. I've been getting this question a lot asking, will there be additional content added to campaign? Will there be added customization unlocks like armor to the campaign, maybe for playing on heroic or legendary? Yeah, I've been seeing this question like nonstop guys talking about like if there's going to be expansions for the campaign. We haven't really had any like hard evidence saying that there's going to be campaign expansions or campaign DLC coming from 343. The closest we have to that right now is this trademark that's been going around talking about on YouTube. I've talked about it multiple times on this channel as well as Halo the Endless being trademarked. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be the name of the next expansion. Oftentimes companies will just kind of go out and grab trademarks just so like eventually if they want to use that name they can without having any issues with copyright. Though with Halo Infinite being a game as a service, the platform for Halo for the next 10 years ideally I totally expect there to be campaign DLC. I think the bigger question is not if there's gonna be DLC, it's more like when was the cadence of how often we will get these DLCs and will they actually cost money? If 343 just ends up kind of utilizing already made assets within the engine and just kind of creates things and stuff like that, I could totally expect to see like annual campaign expansions happening with Halo Infinite. Though if we're looking for like grandiose, large scale, brand new story breaking kind of things like we had with the vanilla story, that would probably be about an every two year kind of cadence. I do expect with these seasons moving forward throughout the multiplayer, we'll also have like a bit of a story arc to follow through as well. Maybe having some changes tied to the campaign and the world that's there, tied to the multiplayer in some capacity as well, could certainly happen. Have some kind of this like loose, kind of like overarching story that does not like super engage in like a full on campaign, but something to kind of keep people involved with the game, provide some context of why certain challenges or certain events are the way they are. Though for campaigns, I would kind of expect to maintain that cadence of pain for an experience. And like if we get like a nice like four hour long kind of additional, like a new island or something like that added to the world, I could say it'd be like a $20 expansion or something like that, maybe even 40 bucks uh, going that far. But if we're talking like a whole new like campaign, brand new experiences, brand new world and things like that, I totally expect it to be like another like $60 paid experience, which I mean, Sounds fair to be honest, because the campaign that we had for Halo Infinite is kind of incredible and I think 100% worth the $60. And talking about getting your money's worth, Zymonth asks, for a mission select feature in this campaign, would you want it to be kind of like New Game Plus in a way where you can take the option to load into the open world mission with your FOB maxed out if you have done it in a game prior or just load in with base weapons? I think it could add more replay value being able to choose what you go into the next mission with from bases. I think this New Game Plus feature really became popularized, especially with like the Dark Souls series that really kind of helped like you know, because you, you grind out your character, you unlock new things, you kind of level up your character, that like maybe like going back through these boss fights, going through these open world situations again, but like with a fully maxed out character, provides a whole new experience. Though it seems like 343 could definitely pull this off. I don't think it'd be too game breaking. Uh, though it does seem like some of the missions within Halo Infinite were kind of designed for you to be at this level at this point kind of thing, especially like the first like two or three missions. But that's kind of the idea of the campaign as a whole is like give players tools to play around with the sandbox and kind of experience the game how they want to. I think a new game plus feature would be a really fun addition because I would love to be able to kind of go through some of these missions and just maybe just replay through the campaign again since we can't select what mission 
missions we want to play, but add like the new game plus feature, I think would be a really cool thing. Being able to select what mission you want to replay is currently being developed on right now at 343. Paul Crocker says they currently don't have a time frame when we will see this update come live. So definitely not within season one, uh, maybe season two, likely season three would be my guess, uh, but you can kind of see how the world is designed and the way the, and the way the mission structure is that it, it can be kind of difficult to like replay a mission because of like the game state and things like that, especially with all the interconnected systems like campaign unlocks for multiplayer and things like that, like having to make sure they don't reset if you go back, because I'm sure it's possible to do, it just might make things kind of wonky or make you have to redo things or reset the game world. Going open world with a live service just makes things more complicated to do. So previous features like we had previously in Halo, which are pretty easy to do when the traditional campaign model it's a little bit more of a task when it comes to Halo Infinite style, which I think it's an effort worth doing because this open world style Halo game is absolutely amazing. And I can't wait to see what 343 does moving forward with it. Continuing on with the world of Zeta Halo, Justin West asked, how satisfied are you with the size of the ring in terms of what you can explore? I would say for the style of map that 343 created and gameplay that they did for Halo Infinite, what we got for vanilla level of the release, I think is totally suffices, if not exceeds my expectations. This world is massive. Like it's huge. And like, they did such a great double, like while utilizing a lot of the same assets of like the pillars, trees, grass, he hills, mountainous like regions, that every area does feel unique. The, ge the geology of the area, which if you guess you want to call it that, uh, makes these areas feel unique, that you don't feel like you're in the same location every single time. It just feels like you're on this new section of Zeta Halo. I do expect with future expansions, like we talked about earlier, like adding a whole new island or something like that, or maybe fleshing out an island a little bit more, adding some more content in there, will totally have it with expansions moving forward. And I feel like there's enough stuff to do if you were looking like, you you know, get all your audio logs, get all your different kind of um, Easter eggs, get all your different types of collectible items and different things you can unlock and click throughout the world and stuff like that. There's, you know, it's, it's rather well lived in, rather packed where I don't feel like it's like ODST where it's like barren and open with like minimal stuff to do. There's plenty to explore beyond just what's marked on the map as well. You have like all these different kind of cave systems you can go check out with like these different kind of Easter eggs, which is pretty fun. You have these Forerunner cave sections as well, where you can find like Easter eggs, or you can also find uh, different weapon variants you can pick up as well. 343 did a great job of rewarding people for exploration and just looking around for things. And I think it's a great start moving forward. Continuing on talking about exploration, moving throughout the world, NRB10 Fuel asked, do you find it a little awkward to get around the map? I feel like there are too many rocks and hills and trees that make it a little bit of a pain in the butt to take one of the usual vehicles around. I find it best to just grapple shot till you f can use a flying vehicle. I totally get where you're coming from with this comment as well, as I do also kind of feel that pain a little bit where like, sometimes I want to travel off the beaten path with like a warthog or a mongoose even. And I just kind of find myself like hitting a lot of like barriers, like rocks and trees and different kind of ledges and elevation changes and things like that. Um, but I think that kind of comes down to the design of the world. I mean, we do have like these open paths that kind of like are intended for you to get like around the different main objectives, which does make sense. And so I don't really find that like it's too impeding where I'm not enjoying myself going throughout the world. I did find it a little tricky moving with a tank. You really feel like you have to stick to like the main road with a tank. And I do find myself a lot of times, yeah, wanting to grapple to different locations, utilizing the grapple shot when it comes to like climbing mountains and things like that. But I think that's kind of in intentional where like a lot of these times when you're climbing on top of mountains there's like some easter egg or some unique weapons that you need to grab utilizing some unique aspect to halo infinite's traversal of the map to get these more unique items anyway the valor system works you generally unlock these more powerful vehicles like tanks and flying vehicles later on in the game which i feel is about right you kind of want to start small and kind of expand the world to kind of give players more freedom but honestly, I feel like there's a nice mix between like being able to explore with vehicles, but also sticking to the main path as well. 
Obsidian Shadow X. What a name right there. <laughs> Asks, here's a question. Do you think leadership will ease up off of 343 and let them make more changes that will bring the game more in line with what they were talking it up to be like at launch? So curious, since the flights had better offerings for the battle pass, maybe think they made 343 change stuff really quick between the flight and shadow drop the multiplayer. Or do you think the Flood will see a return and why? Well, definitely a lot to unpack right there. Uh, I think the first thing I want to talk about definitely is like leadership at 343. Uh, I don't feel like they're really constrained. I think maybe, especially with like the store and stuff like that, they're probably getting pressured to like push this kind of microtransactions a little bit more because it seems like 343 has been so player focused ever since like they started to work on the Master Chief Collection like back in 2018. That like, this is like the first time I've really kind of felt like they weren't being extremely player focused. And with Sketch saying that they were always intending to bring in Team Slayer and how Jerry Hook recently was talking about how they recognized that like, yeah, the pains of the store were definitely going to be a growing point for the community. It's almost like 343 kind of already knew that these problems were going to happen before they even released the game, which makes it kind of feel like maybe like higher ups at Microsoft are telling them how to do things because of like this is what they're doing in other games. That's just my tinfoil hat theory. We recently just heard from uh, 343 during that community stream that they are going to a more like player friendly, player focused kind of experience, making changes that the community wants and they feel like the game truly needs to succeed. Changing up the content like we have for the event for Tenrai, that's changing. We have changes coming to the progression, which we've already had three major changes within the first month. We recently just had the addition of new playlists as well. And I'm sure that's gonna be a rotating thing coming in with new content, new modes and things like that. And I totally see what you're talking about saying like the flight felt like it had a better offering within the battle pass compared to like the launch version. You also can't remember that they said that it was a truncated version of the battle pass. So like they pretty much said like, yeah, we put all the good stuff in the flight and then kind of padded it out throughout the whole thing and added in some more things that weren't in there originally. But the battle pass is something that 343 said they're going to be looking at as well. I would expect season two and especially season three to be a little bit more favorable when it comes to content that's going to be in there. And maybe the reason why they did the shadow drop of the multiplayer is because maybe 343 was like, oh, we have to launch it like this. Well, there's going to be issues. We'll launch it right now and then we'll show you why these are going to be issues. Because Jerry Hook did say that a lot of the internal feedback at 343 is sounding a lot like reddit so maybe they just needed to release the game to have some actual data to show to the higher ups that like yeah this is why your idea of how the game should have launched is a problem and the question of whether or not the flood will return uh, i fully expect them to return uh at some point when where how we don't really know continuing on with the playlist discussion agk927 asks why can't we get ranked slayer or free for all and I understand that pain as well, as those have been traditionally been ranked modes as well. And Jerry Hook recently did mention as well as saying that like doing ranked modes requires more effort than just putting it into a slow social mode as well as our, you know, their CSR tied to it. MMR, the matchmaking system is totally different as well. You also have these different kind of rewards and things like that tied to getting your ranks and things like that. So there's just more effort to create a ranked playlist than there is a social playlist currently right now in Halo Infinite. Though I've been talking about this multiple times on my channel that I truly do believe that there should be like one, maybe two different types of modes when it comes to ranked. And I think right now with the competitive playlist that we have right now, I think it's totally like good when it comes to ranked modes. I feel like if you really want to sweat and you really want to try it and push your skill forward, you really need to just kind of funnel people down that competitive like HDS like setting and experience since traditionally ranked modes have been underpopulated. We saw this in Halo 5, we saw this in MCC as well, that just ranked modes, people tend to play less. And so you really need to kind of like funnel and curate that experience to where it just kind of puts people down these same kind of avenues. And Slayer is in that ranked competitive mode. But I do understand people just want to play Slayer and just want to play ranked Slayer. But the thing is like the social settings aren't really like a well-balanced experience. And so I feel like if you're going to sweat it up, you're going to want to try to play in a more fair competitive environment, which would be the competitive playlist. So it might sound a little contradictory here, but I would love to see a ranked free-for-all settings as well, but with the competitive settings as well. The reason why I want to see free-for-all is because free-for-all is a great place for competitive players to make a name for themselves to where they can possibly join up with an org and say like, hey, I'm like 1900 Onyx in free-for-all. I'm a pretty good player. You might want to add me on your pro team. And 343 has traditionally with Halo 5 and MCC have had free-for-all tournaments 
where you play on the ranked settings for free for all to earn money. And I do feel like there might be enough space to create one extra playlist within the competitive side of things for free for all. But since Slayer is already part of the ranked experience and you, I do really feel like you need to kind of funnel people down to that ranked experience into the competitive mode because it's always underpopulated within Halo compared to social modes. And also on top of that, dividing up like ranked and social modes, like for each mode would just be too much divisions within the player base. You begin lopsided matches, probably matching against full parties and things like that. It just wouldn't be that great of an experience, in my opinion. And talking about amazing experiences, Fungitado asks, when is Forge going to be a thing? And is it going to be as detailed as Halo 5? Well, currently Forge is slated for season three, which is going to be releasing most likely sometime in August, maybe September, if they push it back even further. And from the leaks that I've seen, and from the people I've talked about who've actually had a chance to play around with Forge, uh, it seems like they're going above and beyond any Forge that we've had previously. It might even make Portal from Battlefield look like Child's Play because that's just a game mode editor. We're getting a map editor, map creator. We're also getting a game mode editor, which is so much more in depth from what I've seen in these certain leaks. There's also have been leaks of people breaking into like the Forge canvas as well, which is absolutely massive. Obviously, things can be subject to change. Deadlines can be pushed back or delayed even more, but expect the later half of 2022 is when you will see Forge come to Halo Infinite. But when it does, it's going to make a big a thud because it's going to be a massive drop, a lot of extra content, and just something that's going to be beyond our expectations. So if you're new to the channel or miss any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I'm going to link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.